Hey guys, today we're going to talk about brush pins. Um, and this was inspired by the Pentel Pocket Brush that was sent in my Art Snacks Inktober um, sort of special collection box, but also because a couple of you guys have asked me if I'm familiar with Pentel Pocket Brushes. Now, I do have a video where I go over my favorite brush and food aid pins for inking, and you guys can check that out here. But we're gonna focus more so today on brush pins themselves. As you can see, I have several and they fall into two main categories, I feel. Those that have individual nylon bristles, like the Pentel pocket brush, and those that have a single solid nib that is often, that can be made from felt or foam rubber. So um, we have a variety here to look at today, and we've got that Denik paper to test it out on, but I'm also going to grab a piece of watercolor paper because where I feel like the nylon individual bristle brush pins really shine is doing dry brush techniques. So if you head on over to my blog after this video, natasoup.blogspot.com, and you search for brush pins, you're going to find a lot of in-depth reviews, including field tests. Now, at, in the end, the opinion I give is generally my own and based on my own preferences, but hopefully those reviews will give you guys an idea of what works for you. So let's go ahead and get started. With individual nylon bristle brush pins, you've got some subcategories. You have those which are not refillable, those which are refillable. You, within those, sorry Skype, within, um, let me turn off my sound. Within those that have individ, uh, that are refillable, you have the sort that either you refill by, re, by refilling, you replace the entire backing cartridge or you can fill this up with ink versus those you can fill with water or ink and do not have cartridges available. So your water brush pins do fall in this sort of category. Then you have the sort of brush pins that have a cartridge like this right here. And that cartridge you can either buy replacement cartridges for, let me grab some of those. Oh, hey look, another brush pin. Another brush pin. I have a lot of these. I'm not even joking. Oh, another brush pin. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not kidding when I tell you guys you ought to head on over to the blog because there are a lot of reviews for brush pins over there. And if brush pins are something you're interested in, I've definitely got you covered. Oh, okay. So this is what the cartridge for a Pintel pocket brush looks like. A Pintel pocket brush like this one right here, those are gonna be your most common pocket brushes. You can find those almost anywhere from Jerry's Artorama to Dick Blick to Michaels. Um, I recommend you don't buy them at Michaels because they're 17 bucks at Michaels. You get them at Dick Blick where they're 13 or you get them online through Amazon where they're 12. So, Pintel pocket brush. Let's go ahead and move these for a minute. Pretty basic. The ink is not actually that, the standard ink, the ink that comes inside the cartridges, not that dark, um, not that solid. If you really wanna build up heavy spot blacks, really thick spot, spot blacks that aren't gray, you are gonna have to do a few layers. Um, you can refill these with the ink of your choice, like an well, you want to avoid inks that have um, like shellac in them and you want to avoid inks that um, are acrylic. I do have a tutorial over on the blog where I show you guys how to refill these with a syringe. For me, that's too much effort. These days, I just use a brush dipped in the ink of my choice if I'm going to go to that effort. But it is something good to know. Like, for instance, um, I am fairly sure that Pentel pocket brush when fully dry is Copic marker safe. I do believe a few of my artist friends use them with their Copics. Um, please do not hold me to that though. But if you filled the cartridge with Kaime Soul K or let me grab it actually. Kaime drawing Soul K ink. This is Copic proof for sure, but not waterproof. 
Okay, so that's the Pentel Pocket Brush. Next, we have the Pentel Curari. The Pentel Curari is really just a Pentel Pocket Brush in a fancier body that costs more. Um, I bought it to review, and again, you can check out that review at the blog or on the blog, but it's pretty much the same thing. So when you guys see me using this pen, I'm really just using a Pentel Pocket Brush. And this lives in my pencil case, partially because I paid, I paid extra for this thing and I'm going to use it. But also, um, so when I was at SCAD, pretty much everybody had one of these floating around and they would just get misplaced or lost or borrowed, right? Because they are so common, so ubiquitous, the black body Pentel pocket brush, pretty easy to confuse with anybody else's pocket brush. This, I mean, nobody's going to, well, they might steal, steal it, but no one's going to accidentally steal it. Okay, so next we have the sort that have um, an attached cartridge body. This is a pilot brush pen. I did, again, review this over on the blog. Sorry about that. You guys ever have one of those sinking moments where you realize you're not wearing your lavalier mic and you're wondering how your levels are sounding? Just wanted to make sure that you guys could hear me. I have it on now. I probably sound a lot better, but it does seem like you could hear me before. Okay, so this is a uh, pilot brush pen. It's got a much smaller individual bristle nib than most other brush pens. So if you're heavy handed like me, this might be a really good choice. Most of you are probably familiar with Pentel's um, brush pen that's similar to this. Those are really common. I believe those were common in the U.S. before the pocket brush was common in the U.S. But I and I have one. It's somewhere. I don't know where. Um, so this one it does, I really like Pilot's ink. Um, it's much darker than the pocket brush ink. Um, this also has a finer tip, so you can do finer inking. Uh, and you squeeze to get more ink. So you can kind of selectively decide if you're gonna dry brush or if you're gonna apply a solid line, which is something that I really like. And I believe I ordered this off of Jet Pins a while back when I was reviewing a lot of brush pins in 2015, but um, I think you can get them through Amazon as well. This is an Akashia brush pin. This is a cartridge type brush pin. And it has a bamboo body. You can get these on Amazon these days for about $19. They used to be much more expensive. I've had this for a really long time and it performs pretty similarly to the Pentel pocket brush. This one, oh, you do need to be careful. Do you see, you might not be able to see. So inside the cap, it's bamboo with metal bands. Your bristles will get caught on the metal bands. Let me see if I can get to focus. You see how I have some stray hairs? So that would be one reason not to get the Akashia brush. Next, we have a, oh my goodness, it's, <laughs> you know what? Give me a second. I'm going to go pull up the name for this. I know it's made by Sailor and it's in their special collection of calligrapher brushes. I just want to make sure I get their name right. Okay, it is a Sailor Fude Nagomi brush pen. This is the Hansa Curry Hair one in Brush Warbler Olive Green. And you can find these on jet pins. I actually haven't seen them too many other places. And when I reviewed this pen, I really liked it. I reviewed this over again on the blog. Um, it's got a tapered body. It's comfortable to hold in the hand. It's capable of very fine lines. Unfortunately, this one is not refillable. And it is probably not waterproof. Now, to be fair, I'm sort of cheating it because you can't find out if something is waterproof until you've allowed it to cure fully. And if I'm applying water right away, I'm not allowing it to cure fully. So what I may have to do is I may have to make this an extended review where I come back tomorrow and apply water. Lastly, for this particular overview, we have water-based watercolor individual hair brushes like the Zig Clean Color Real Brush. Now this is intended to be used with water and there are a few others like it on the market, but not too many. There's the Akashia Sai. There's the um, Neo Pico 4. So there's a few. But honestly, 
with immediate application, any of the brush pins I just showed you could be used for a faux ink wash effect. So next we're going to move on to um, solid nib brush pins. These fall more in the food aid pin category. So again, if you're more interested in the solid nib brush pins, please check out this video here. I have just linked it. Um, it is an overview of my favorite brush pins. So I kind of just, for this, I kind of hold out a bunch of different ones to give you guys a gamut to look at. So we have my favorite, the one you guys see, or one of my two favorites. You guys see me use this a lot on the channel. It is a Kuratake Fudego Kochi. It is a very small brush pin nib. Use this for inking a lot. If I'm not using the Fudego Kochi, I am using Sailor's Mitsuo Ida. And that one has a very, fun, this one's running dry. I don't know why I'm even playing around with that. It has a very fine nib a much larger nib. When fully dry, it is waterproof and Copic marker proof. But as you guys see with almost any of these markers, if I immediately apply water, it's going to smear. So that is definitely something you want to keep in mind. Next, we have the um, Sakura of America's Pigma BB. They also make a Pigma MB and a Pigma Fine B. BB is big brush, MB is medium brush, FB is fine brush. And the BB is cool because it has a nib very similar. Let me pull one out to Copic's Super Nib. So I have said before, more so on the blog than on the channel, that I would love it if someone introduced um, a brush pin that has the same sort of flex and give and bounce as a Copic Super Nib and Sakura of America did that. And the Sakura of America brushes or uh, MB, BB and FB are pretty commonly available from places like Dick Blick or Jet Pins or Amazon. And um, you can check the description below. I will be linking some of these, although not all of them. We also have an, oh goodness. You know, I reviewed this on the, on the blog. I forgot who made it. Uh, I think it's Zebra. Let me double check. Well, I am having difficulty finding it. I did get it from Jet Pins last year, so start there, I guess. Um, and I was searching their site, but they've recently added so many new brush pins that it's making it increasingly hard to find the old ones, which is fine. I mean, if you are interested in trying out a bunch of different kinds of Japanese brush pins, that's great. Anyway, um, so much smaller, very, very soft capable of very fine lines and very thick lines. And we have this Kuretake. Um, it's sort of like a food aid pen. I haven't broken it quite in yet. And this is one of the very few cartridge based um, food aid pens I've seen. Usually these are not refillable. And then lastly, I have something that a friend sent to me and uh, it's by Platinum. And eventually I will review it for you guys. I don't wanna open it right now because I do intend on, on opening it and reviewing it and I don't wanna have to repackage it. But it's got a larger um, sort of like composite nib, like a composite fiber nib and it seems to be refillable. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, um, the majority of food aid nibs are not going to be refillable. Then you have, um, they're called brush pins here in the US. Um, Sakura of America makes the Pigma brush pin and uh, Pitt makes one. And it's, you know what, I'll grab the Pitt one too. No, I have it somewhere relatively convenient. And Copic makes them, but I don't believe I have any black Copic brush pins. I might, they're probably put away. In fact, Pitt makes them in a variety of colors. And if you're interested in Pitt pens, you should check out the blog. Anyway, so you have what 
Americans think of as brush pens, which have a much longer brush, much more prone to getting damaged. These tend to get beaten up pretty quick. That's one of the reasons why I like Fude pens is they, you will run out of ink before you wreck the nib. Whereas with these, you're gonna wreck the nib before you're gonna run out of ink. Now, the Faber-Castell Pit Pen is waterproof when completely cured, but not Copic proof. The Pigma Brush Pen is water and alcohol marker, including Copic proof when fully cured. See, these things are really important to know if you enjoy doing mixed media or if you like inking your pieces. Um, because, I mean, who wants to do a, take a commission and it's all sketched out and the sketch looks great and then you go to add water or you go to add Copics and it's ruined and you have to start all over again. How discouraging is that? I mean, it's discouraging when you're just working on a piece for yourself and that happens. So I think it is really important to know marker compatibility. I think it's really important to know inking material compatibility. I wish more companies would release that sort of information. Um, and when I write to companies about that kind of stuff, they're like, well, you should find out for yourself. And it's like, yes, there are people like me who do review these sort of supplies, who do try to make this sort of information commonly available to help other people. Because you're not, when you're using a product and you enjoy a product, yeah, you might test for alcohol marker and you might test for water, but there's all sorts of other solvents out there that you're not going to think to test for until the time comes when you're using it and it ruins your piece or you're using it and it works out really well. So I do wish companies would take their artists consumers a little more seriously um and you know maybe treat us with a little bit more respect because we are your customers um <laughs> But I think you guys have also heard me talk about, I tried to join a professional organization for art supply manufacturers. Um, I wrote to them because like to join, it's like a thousand something dollars. And I wrote if they had an artist rate or like a self-employment rate. And they were like, no. And I, that just kind of, I mean, it's okay if they don't want to offer that kind of rate, but they said they didn't even have a tier for artists and that they didn't get artists who wanted to join and that just blows my mind because it's like if you're a professional you want to understand the tools you use my dad was a drilling engineer and he knew the fluids and the muds he used like the back of his hand like you could tell him the viscosity of the oil and he could tell you what solvents you're going to need to use so i don't understand why that wouldn't be applicable to artists because we're professionals anyway i'm so sorry about that I care about it a lot, like a kind of a crazy person amount, probably. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and look at this watercolor paper. Now, the reason we're using watercolor paper is because it definitely has a texture. You can also use Bristol, Bristol vellum. Um, the reason we want the texture is because we're going to do dry brush. And I did demonstrate dry brush in my Inktober Art Snacks overview video, but I want to talk about that a little more detail. So a lot of artists really seek this sort of broken line and this can be great because it introduces a gray tone to your piece so instead of just black and white you have black white and a shadow and you can even build up your gray scale a bit and the reason we're using this sort of very textured paper is when you use a flat paper the ink can uniformly sit on the paper surface with a textured paper if you're moving quickly it's going to hit just the top bumps and it's going to skip over the little valleys so it can be re really useful for like i said you know gray areas or areas of less um saturation it can also be useful i don't like using it on faces because it tends to age faces but it can also be useful in adding facial shadows or stubble when i'm drawing this small it's actually very hard to get it to And um, the Pentel Pocket Brush is really good at very quickly 
hitting that sort of, of sweet spot. And the smaller fude nibs are, it's much harder to get um, dry brush with these. So you really want a brush with individual individual bristles if you want to do dry brush. Now I'm gonna run downstairs and grab a sketchbook because the other night my friends and I went on a ghost tour to celebrate one of my friend's birthdays. And we, uh, I, I sketched a few, not, not as many as I should have, but I sketched a few of the locations using this. This is really great for on the spot gesture sketching. When I went to Japan, I used the heck out of one of these things. You can cover large areas quickly. There's a fluidity of, of line that in, encourages spontaneity. It's easier to just sort of let go and accept whatever comes out of the pen. So I'm gonna go grab that sketchbook and I'll be right back. So, you know, I never had a whole lot of time uh, to do any of these. And <laughs> my friends kind of looked at me like I'd grown a horn. Um, I always say I wanna do more uh, field sketching, more urban sketching, more travel sketching. So, you know, I tried to make a pri priority of it that night, but I pretty much just sketched in the dark any architecture that looked interesting as quickly as I possibly could. And the Pentel Pocket Brush is great for that. Great for field sketching. There's a lot of artists who use it for that. So um, I hope this little overview of brush pins, the wide variety of brush pins was helpful to you guys. I hope it was useful to you guys. I hope it was inspiring. I hope you're gonna pick up a brush pin and give it a shot especially those of you who rely very heavily on fine liners to accomplish line weight. Um, there are so many brush pins out there. I'm a huge advocate for them. I love them. They've changed how I ink. I highly recommend you try them. Um, <clears throat> and if you don't like one type, try other types, experiment with them. There's a lot of them out there. So I'm sure there's one that's right for you out there. Um, let's see. If you enjoy this video, please remember to hit like. Um, that helps me out a lot. That lets YouTube know that you enjoy my content. I appreciate that. Uh, if you really like this video, take a minute and share it with your friends over on um, your favorite social network, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest. All those are useful. Um, one of you shared... Uh, linked my video on Instagram. That was really awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So you can do it. It just takes a little bit more, um, takes a couple extra steps. Can link it on Tumblr. All of those are super helpful to me and I would really appreciate it if you took a moment to do that. It really means a lot to me. I do see when you guys do that. I do care when you guys do that. It's not wasted effort on your part. I really do appreciate it. Um, and you help me out a lot. Even if you think you don't have anybody who's interested in this kind of stuff, there are people who watch these sort of videos because it relaxes them. There are people who watch these sort of videos because they always wanted to get into art and never, for whatever reason, never could. So you don't know who you're going to help by sharing a video like this. It's my job to try and inspire your, you guys. And if you guys wanna help me out, please share these videos with your friends and family. It means a lot to me when you do it. Um, if you're looking for more inky goodness, especially for brush pens, head on over to the blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. I have a lot of information over there on how to use brush pens or you know different brush print reviews. So um, please check that out. I have a whole inking a uh, hub page set up to help facilitate that for you guys. So you can just buzz through all of those. Um, and if you would like to join the Nata Soup community, which gets you early access to these sort of goodies, um, head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Soup for information on how to join the Nata Soup community, what joining my community does for you guys, and how it helps me out as an artist and a creator of tutorials, tips, overviews, Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I just ran up the stairs <laughs> and reviews. So I'm Becca Hilburn. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in my studio today. I hope I've got you pumped for Inktober. Let's rock it. I will see you guys really soon. Bye.